Okay guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about JLC PCB and ordering with their SMT service. Uh, yes, obviously this is sponsored content, but this is actually something I requested to do. I asked them if I could do this video instead of them asking me to do it. Uh, I actually tried out their service myself for the first time and uh, just wanted to review with people how to go through the process using Easy EDA and this service they offer. Okay, so before we really get started on the assembly service, let's talk about the limitations you have. And really, there's not too many limitations anymore. When they first added the service, you are limited to a single side, but now they have two different packages they offer. So you can go with the economic service, and you're kind of stuck with a green PCB and being single-sided with your components. Um, that, it doesn't mean it's a single-sided PCB. You still have your second side where components can be put on there. They just won't put them on for you uh, in that economic package. So you'll, you'll have to put on the other side. They also have the standard service, which that is a double-sided and you can get all the different colors and there's a lot more options uh, with that. Uh, another thing to kind of keep in mind is you want to make sure your components you're using are in stock. Uh, now, just because it's not in their extended library doesn't mean it can't be added to it. You can always talk to their technical support and see if you can get a component that maybe at, is at LCSC but they don't have in their extended library uh, just to make sure that you can get it on there. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at using uh, Easy EDA Pro, which is more aligned with doing this assembly service uh, versus the standard edition, which in the standard edition, it lets you pick a lot of components that are not available for assembly uh, very easily. So uh, let's let's go ahead and get into Easy EDA and take a look at this. Now with Easy EDA, there's nothing you actually have to install on your computer. Uh, if you want it to do the auto routing and route faster, you definitely would want to install that plugin on your computer. But other than that, there's really no need to install the app. You just go in and log in and it works right in the browser. So this is the kind of standard page you're met with right here and you're gonna create your account and log in. Once you log in, go with the Pro Edition and this is the screen you will be met with on the Pro Edition. Some of the first things you might wanna check out once you log in for the first time is you come down here and there's a tutorial and a video tutorial section where you can actually check out some videos produced by JLC PCB or read their tutorials on how to use it. Uh, if you've ever used the standard edition of uh, Easy EDA, uh, this is Fairly similar, but they kind of copied, in my opinion, they kind of copied the look and feel of um, uh, Altium. And it has a much, if you're used to Altium, you'll be pretty comfortable using uh, the Pro Edition of ECEDA. Uh, it's, it's just very similar. It's not quite like uh, KiCad or KeyCad, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and uh, it's not very much like the standard edition. I mean, it, there's enough similarity that you won't be completely lost but it really is more similar to Ultium in my opinion. Um, so then you'll actually start creating your project. Now I'm not gonna go into full detail about making an entire project because that'd be a whole nother tutorial in its own, probably like a three or four part series really of creating your circuit board. What it comes down to for using this assembly service, you either need to create your entire project in Easy EDA or you can import an existing one. So you could import like an Altium project or a KiCad project here. Uh, but let's just go through it as if we're going to make a new one. So let's just go new project and name it video. And uh, save. Okay, so now we've made a new project. This is what your workspace will look like in your new project. You'll have a schematic and a PCB in here. So we're now in our schematic and we can start adding components. So just be place device or shift F. So shift F. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your components you are adding uh, are actually in the library. So one of the things that makes it easy to tell is you'll see a JLC PCB in stock. So you, you'll know for a fact that, hey, I can use this component because JLC PCB has it in stock. Now the way I prefer to find components is not to actually search in here, but to go to LCSC's website and search what I'm looking for first and see what they have. So uh, we'll look for an at tiny here and see what we have here. We got 47 of them in stock. And so that means there's a good chance JLC PCB has them in stock or at least has it in their extended library because LCSC and JLC PCB are the, the same company. So uh, let's go here and put it in. 
So we're, we want this at tiny and we want to place this component. So we will pick it and place. Whoops, didn't mean to click it. Uh, click place. And now we have this at tiny microcontroller in here that we know is in stock. And then after we put all of our supporting infrastructure on here, then we'll go to the PCB. So we'll just go ahead and save this and import it into the PCB. So let's go over to our PCB here. And this is done similar to Altium, where you import changes from schematic. Apply changes, and there we go. Now we have our microcontroller in the board. Uh, there's a whole lot more that goes into making the circuit board, uh, but once we've completed our circuit board, so let's go to one of these other projects that I've actually uh, finished here. We're not gonna save any changes there. Let's go to this one, which I designed to order from them. And you'll see, you'll have your full schematic here with all your components in it. And then you'll have your PCB laid out where you have all of your components on the circuit board. Okay, now, so for ordering the PCB, we're just gonna go to order and order PCB. So it's gonna process it and you just click confirm. And now when we go on, on here, it's going to process our Gerber file. You can pick what color you want. Uh, and then we want the SMT service on here. So let's go ahead and get our PCB with SMT service. We have just a top side assembly. And so we can confirm this. Now it automatically imports our bomb and CPL file from that. They just want to know what, what we're building so I think it was under other, let's just click others. It's going to process it a little bit and we confirm all the components we want on there. Okay, so there's two things you really wanna look at while you're on this page where you're deciding what components to put on. First of all, if there's any components you just don't want put on at all, uh, make sure to remove those. So like I have this header that's on there. I don't want them to put it on for two reasons. It's a through hole component, which is an additional fee and time on. And second of all, I just already have these on hand. So there's no need for them to put it on. Uh, I had another through hole component on here uh, that I don't want. Oh yeah, U3, this connector. I don't want them to put that on either. So these two, I don't want them to put on. And then the other thing to take into consideration here is if it's an extended, if it's in there extended and not their basic service, which everything I used was in there extended, there is a fee for these extended components. So we'll just go ahead and click next. Um, now we have to confirm our parts placement. So it's gonna show us where all these parts go. And so this would be where we can confirm our parts placement on here. Uh, one of the other things to notice is see, I have a $72 uh, extended parts fee. So if I'd use like basic components, it would just be this component fee, uh, but it's almost double the price because I used all extended components. So that's definitely something you wanna keep into consideration here. Uh, but so at $164 is what this comes out to, which is about $32 a board. Now that it's actually a competitive price. If I were to assemble this myself, I would be looking at a very similar price if I had bought all of these components from US made manufacturers instead of LCSC. Uh, I would actually save a decent amount of money if I were to just build these myself uh, since they're all extended components. If I were to assemble this myself and order everything from LCSC, uh, it would be about $72 cheaper, um, which, which would then bring down the price to like 15 16 dollars a board uh, but if i were to use american made components i actually would be in a very similar price range so uh, I would still give this a competitive price even even at this price so that's just like running through two of the things you really want to look out for is if you're using through hole components and if you are using uh, extended parts because that extended part fee does add up when you're using all extended parts now just because you used one or two extended components in there does not mean you're actually going to be paying $72. It really varies with how many you used. 
every single component I put on there was an extended component. So that's why mine added up to so much. You can definitely be a whole lot cheaper without it. But I just wanted to kind of cover that so that we get an idea of how what pricing really is on one of these and what the quality is. So let's actually now take a look at the boards because I have already received them in the package. So let's uh, open them up and take a look at them. Okay, so let's take a look at the individual circuit boards. No need to really get into the packaging. It was wrapped in ESD safe bubble wrap and with some ESD safe styrofoam in between each one. So uh, nothing really to report home on on packaging. And uh, let's just look at the circuit board. So my main takeaway on this is it's pretty obvious that all of these needed a little bit of rework on the inductor. Uh, it's a heavy thermal mass thing. Now they did the rework in house. I didn't have to do it, but you can see some flux residue here from where they were reflowing. I, I think it was this, it could have been the diode that they did the rework to. Uh, but so on this, you can see some flux residue and same with on this one. I didn't choose to show this one as the first one to show you because I've done some work around on it. So it's a little bit dirty just because I was testing some different things out, like seeing if I really needed the filter and stuff like that. Uh, so I'd added my components here that were the through hole components that I didn't have them put on the board. Uh, one of the things to note is some of these that had rework, they uh, definitely got a little too hot with the hot air around them uh, and uh, left some browning on the circuit board, which really is not a big deal as long as it's not something that you're trying to show off as a circuit board. So uh, that might be undesirable if you're doing a video like I am, or if it's like a badge that you're going to wear to an event. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't want that. But to me, it's not a big deal. It doesn't really bother me that much. It's definitely not going to affect the performance of these boards. Uh, just That's just a little bit of the FR4 under underneath there that got overheated. So uh, yeah, just something to, to think about. The, if you have something with a lot of thermal mass on there like this, they may have difficulty. You might want to do this as a you install it component instead of them installing uh, if it's just got a ton of thermal mass like that if you are concerned with the quality of the board. Because I mean, that's that's clearly what happened there is these needed rework and uh, that and it's completely understandable for anybody that's ever assembled a circuit board, especially if you've ever worked with a reflow oven, uh, that's most likely how they're assembling these uh, is on a reflow oven. It could be a wave solder machine, but I'm willing to bet that they're just using uh, the reflow oven to assemble these, uh, especially these ones where the components are just on one side. That That's probably why is because they, they want to do it that way. They On the dual-sided boards, they probably use a um, uh, wave solder machine. They may also be using uh, a reflow oven, but then just applying adhesive on all of the components. Not really sure how they do it. I I've never asked. Um, but yeah, that's just my, my only observation of a complaint there is the ones that they had to hand rework. Uh, you can definitely tell that that happened there. Uh, but the there's no solder balls. There's minimal flux left on there. There's minimal scratches on the board. So there's really nothing to truly complain about, especially at the price we paid for it, because we're, we're talking, we paid less than $200 to get five circuit boards with components assembled. While, I mean, that would be unheard of 15 years ago, trying to say, yeah, I want, I want to get a board house to, you know, make my circuit board, put, order my components and assemble it for me for less than a couple thousand dollars, really. So it's definitely something, I find it amazing that we live in a day where you and I from home can, can order something like this for a honestly reasonable cost. So I'm not just saying that because they sponsor my content. I, I really do think that it's a really cool service, especially for the guys that look at the stuff and go, hey, I really want to get into electronics. I really want to make my own circuits, but man, I just can't solder these small things on. It's just something I can't do. Or, you know, they'll do BGA. So maybe you've been looking at a, a ball grid array chip that you've wanted to work with and you're like, man, I really, I just can't put that on there myself. I don't have the machine to. Well, you can get them to do that for you. So.
uh, definitely is something to think about. Well, I hope you guys found this video interesting about the JLC PCB assembly service. It's something I've really wanted to try out for a while now and wanted to show it off as I was doing it. This was my first time using their assembly service and I was pleased with it. I really just don't have the time to be assembling all of my projects right now. So it made it easier to do this video and do the next video that's coming up on this where we take a look at this power supply and what we're using it for. Cause this is actually gonna let us use a 56 volt battery with some soldering irons. Uh, and I thought it was an interesting project. So uh, this has enabled something that I couldn't do with my time. And really, if you think about it, the price you're paying for that assembly service is well worth it. Uh, if you were to consider how long you spend assembling them. So definitely something that I find a good value in and thought that I got a good service in. And I didn't mention it in here, but it only took a couple of days longer to get this than I would when I normally just order the blank PCBs. I, I think it was three days longer than normal. Um, so, I mean, that's really fast too, uh, to to get all of those components on there, get them all right and have them ordered. Cause the main thing that pushed me into using their assembly service in it this time was I couldn't get the uh, buck regulator that I used uh, in stock here in the United States. So they were sold out on Mauser DigiKey and Newark. So I was gonna order it from LCSC and I said, you know, if I'm gonna make an order with LCSC, I might as well just try out the assembly service this time. Uh, so that's what I did. So I hope you guys liked it. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about it and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.